Jules Gabriel Verne, who is often called the father of science fiction, grew up in a well-to-do family in the city of Nantes, about 50 miles from the Atlantic Ocean on the coast of France. Nantes was a port city on the Loire River, and if you were to catch a glimpse of young Jules during the 1830s when he was a boy, you'd likely see him watching the clippers and schooners from the quayside, dreaming about the day when he'd sail off on his own adventures to exotic ports of call. In fact, there's an old Verne family legend that says he tried to do just that at 11 years of age, hiring himself out as a cabin boy on a clipper headed for the Indies. Fortunately, his father, Pierre Verne, caught up with the ship before it made open sea and hauled young Jules back home, making him promise to travel only in his imagination, at least presumably until he finished school. So Jules stuck with his studies. He had a good mind for remembering and reciting facts. He did well in geography and languages and had a nice singing voice. But he wasn't a very remarkable scholar. He graduated from high school with the underwhelming grade of good enough, which must have been a little disappointing to his dad. See, Pierre wanted Jules to become an attorney, like himself. But Jules's mother, whose name was Sophie, came from a long line of shipwrights and sailors and had a strong artistic side. Jules Verne once said her imagination was like a tornado compared to his. So, when he was sent off to Paris to study law, his mother asked her brother, who was a painter, to look after her son. As a result, young Jules, at age 19, became acquainted with all the writers and artists and actors of the Latin Quarter of Paris, a bohemian collection of creative sorts including the French author Alexandre Dumas, who wrote The Three Musketeers, and his son. Jules really wanted to become a writer, and these friends encouraged Jules in his literary endeavors. He started working on novels, he wrote and produced plays, and he also began writing stories for this magazine, The Family Museum, whose editor wanted to make topics of science, technology, history, and geography easy to understand for the general public. And of course, Jules was perfect for the job. Well, his father, though, was still after him to become a successful attorney, even offering him his own practice. So this was an important crossroads. But the decision was clear to Jules. He would refuse the job and pursue success in writing. But then, then he traveled to his best friend's wedding and met a woman named Honorine and fell in love. And figuring he'd better get serious about earning a living so as to be seen as an acceptable suitor, he went into business as a stockbroker and was able to marry the woman he fancied. In 1861, their only child, Michelle, was born. But Jules didn't stop writing. He got up early to work on his stories before heading to the stock exchange and researched late into the night. Even so, it wasn't until Jules Verne entered partnership with a publisher named Pierre Jules Hetzel that his writing endeavors finally took off. And they did so quite literally with Hetzel's publication of Five Weeks in a Balloon in 1863. This novel, an exciting new kind of adventure novel that combined science and geography, was the first, not just in a sequence of novels by Verne called, in English, Extraordinary Journeys, but the first in a whole new genre of writing called science fiction. Next to come were the adventures of Captain Hatteras, Journey to the Center of the Earth, From the Earth to the Moon, in Search of the Castaways, and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. In 1870, Verne could finally leave the stock exchange and live on his writing income. And he was finally able to travel as he had always dreamed. Jules and Honorine bought a small yacht, named it after their son, and spent a lot of time sailing the seas from the coast of France and the British Isles to the Mediterranean. And always, always, Jules was writing. In fact, he wrote Around the World in 80 Days almost entirely while on board a ship. By the time it was completed, writes one of his biographers, Jules Verne was a household name. He would go on to author more than 60 books, as well as dozens of plays, short stories, and librettos. He is among the top three most translated writers of all time, just behind Agatha Christie and before William Shakespeare.
and his musings on science and technology have sparked the imaginations of writers, scientists, and inventors for over a century. In fact, did you know he actually wrote about many, many inventions and technologies we now have today? Some say you predicted them, like a prophet, and some say he was just imagining them, but others say he was simply observing what was going on in the world, and he had the sense to see where it was all going. It's worth noting, too, that in some of his writing, especially in his later years, he also warned of the dangers of unchecked technology in the hands of the wrong people. Jules Verne died in 1905 at age 77, but his influence lives on. His works are now considered an important part of the French literary canon and Western popular culture as well, being made into many recordings and film adaptations. Thank you, Jules Verne, for taking us with you around the world, into the center of the earth, deep below the surface of the sea, and even into the future we now inhabit. We're glad you chose literature instead of litigation, to trade in words instead of in stocks and bonds, and to share your beautiful and brilliant imagination with us. This author biography has been brought to you by Litwits, helping teachers and home educators bring great books to life for kids since 2010. For tons of free creative teaching ideas, plus printables, videos, and online workshops and classes, visit our website at litwits.com. See you there!